All right, so these are the kind of videos that are the least fun to make, least fun to edit, but a lot of people do like to watch them. Hunter came up with a really, really good idea today. She wants me to do a video detailing all about trolling spoons. That's something that she didn't know much about, and she wants me to tell everybody about trolling spoons. So one of my favorite things, y'all see them in the video all the time. Just kidding. Today we're talking about crankbaits, everything from two foot deep all the way down to 20 foot deep. So that's what I'm going to try to go over and let y'all know when to throw what, in what situation, what rod, what reel, what line to throw it on, and my ideas behind it. My concept is a little different than most people, so I'm going to let y'all know what I think. Okay, I'm going to start out with the Mac Daddy of deep cranking plugs, at least has been for the past, I don't know, eight or ten years or so. 10 years at least probably because I remember when I was in high school throwing this thing around some high school bass tournaments and me and my partner back then was absolutely wrecking them throwing them on like six nine and seven foot medium heavy fast rods so you don't have to go buy a thousand dollar rod and reel just for cranking you don't have to because when they're really really eating it they're really really on it they're going to choke this thing and you'll catch you know, a decent percentage of the fish still but Strike King 6XD. It has been the king of the deep crankbaits for a long time now. A lot, in a lot of ways, the uh, Strike King series crankbaits have been a, the king of a lot of crankbaits for a while now. Everybody knows that. That's no secret. But I'll throw this this crankbait right here on a seven foot four or seven foot six, medium heavy to heavy action, moderate medium heavy to heavy power, moderate action cranking rod. I don't know why I said medium heavy to heavy heavy action because that's not the action, but medium heavy power moderate action what that means is this lure is a little bit heavier when you're really really trying to launch that crankbait the medium heavy is a little bit harder to load and it's well whenever you load it it's got a ton of force to sling this sucker a freaking mile so this is one of my favorite colors i don't even know what it's called tennessee shad or something like green gizzard something like that but love that color i want to i i use these mostly for cranking brush piles a lot of people like to crank the uh tennessee river ledges and stuff like that with it i've never really had a really really good day cranking tennessee river ledges i have i'll pull up to a point and crank it and then catch one or two off of it but i've never had a day where i just catch 50 on a deep diving crankbait probably because i don't throw it that much but i throw these and brush piles a ton these and the 5xd a lot so brush pile bait deep deep uh, ledge bait the, the problem with this is i can't get it to hit usually deep enough for them ledges on the tennessee river so you gotta throw something a little bit deeper there usually or you can long line this one but this right here is a really good brush pile bait really good uh man shell bed bait all that kind of stuff long points i've caught them off everything on this thing and this is one that's just kind of similar we just had it out for no real reason almost the same exact thing goes for this one just a little bit different color actually that's a color i would never throw on a deep diving crankbait but hey i'm sure some of y'all have caught them on that exact color so next we're gonna go to what they're biting right now so in this category that's gonna be the 5xd 6xd i don't really throw anything you know in the 12 foot range i really don't throw much i mean crankbaits in that range usually i'm throwing to up to 10 to 12 and then deeper than you know around 20 so what they're biting right now really, really well, these style crankbaits. The eight to 10 foot divers, The uh, this is a uh, wiggle wart, everybody knows that. That's just a storm wiggle wart, pretty good color there. And then the Bandit 200, I'm pretty sure this is 200. I didn't actually read the package on this, but this one's not gonna go 10 foot. But these crankbaits right here are absolutely killer from now until pre-spawn. I actually love throwing these depth range crankbaits now this right here i'm going to do a little bit different than obviously the deep diving crankbaits i'm going to get up and cast this really really tight to cover i'm going to try to find that first drop off from the bank where it first drops off from maybe four foot down to six or if sometimes it just drops off big time on a bluff and there might be a scattered huge rock somewhere and i'm going to crank this down five seven foot deep and try to hit the tops of those scattered rocks or anything like that so if I'm gonna just burn up the bank, I don't usually throw these types of baits. These are always gonna be around a deeper piece of wood, some type of a drop, some type of a drop with some, you know, any kind of rock on or anything like that, or beside a bluff where there's some scattered big rocks. Now, if I'm gonna burn up the bank, I'm almost always gonna go for one of these two options right here, square bill or a rattling bait, just a lipless crankbait. So, this right here is just a killer bait all winter, all the way to the pre-spawn. It's one of my least favorite baits, actually, 
but it does really, really catch them when you get around to January, February, March time of year. Even now, it really, really catches them. But there's just something, it's just a little bit different action. And this one right here is a big one. So you can throw this one and fish it in four, six, even eight foot deep. You downsize like a quarter ounce one sometimes, and you can actually get up there in six, eight, a foot of water, six, eight inches or a foot of water, and catch those schooling fish in the fall on a small little bait like this, this time of year. Now, this right here, to me, is just the king of cranking. I absolutely love doing this. I, you can throw this thing anywhere you want to throw it. It pretty much has four-wheel drive. So I like to get up there, throw it all up in the wood, all up in the trees, the laydowns where you'd normally be flipping a jig or casting a text rig or something like that. This time of year, I will throw this sucker all through it, and I seem to get a lot bigger bites on a square build than I do flipping a jig even. So I keep this thing honest pretty much all year, but especially this time of year, and then the pre-spawn, they get on it big time before people really, really know it. But these two baits right here are really my burn the bank up and cover a ton of water baits. This one, not so much, but this one right here, that's my little baby. So another big genre of crankbaits are flat-sided crankbaits. And whenever they get really, really good, it's all it's not always in the winter but i only pretty much throw them in the winter and the reason for that is there's just something about that tight wobbling action that looks really really natural in the winter months so anytime that water is falling a lot of people want to give you a actual water temp where they switch from you know a square bill to a flat side of bait whenever that water is falling i don't care if it falls from 90 degrees to 75 degrees it almost always puts that fish in a funk because they go from what they're used to to all of a sudden their metabolism has just got slower very quickly because they are cold-blooded creatures so anytime the water temperature is falling if they're not really biting cranking how i should i'll switch to a flat side of crankbait no matter what even if the water temp's still relatively warm but this time of year the water temperature is falling and it's staying there it's falling for good so the fish are starting to slow down i will switch to these flat side of baits and actually cover a good bit of water with them it seems like whenever the water's cold and clear the flat side of baits really really outfish any kind of square bill baits or even the the bandits or the wiggle warts whenever it's cold and clear it just seems to catch it better now in the pre-spawn whenever you talk about february march whenever the water temp starts creeping up it's going from 42 to 45 and it's still a colder water but it's a warming trend these wider wobbling baits on those flat points seem to catch bigger fish than the than the, the flat side style baits so Whenever it's dropping in the winter, it's really, really dropping. I'll always use a flat side of bait. It just seems to catch your numbers, and in the winter, it's kind of tough to catch numbers of fish. Flat side of baits, year after year, seem to do that for me. Pre-spawn, like I said, this right here will catch your numbers and your big ones. But do not forget, when it's, there's a warming trend, a lot of times I'll throw, be throwing some of the DT series crankbaits for this flat-sided bagley right here. And this square bill will start showing out and whenever you start getting bites on this square bill they just tend to be bigger in the pre-spawn because it displaces a lot more water it's a it, it just even though the profile might not feel bigger the water displacement in the water is so much more it just triggers those big fish and seems to catch bigger fish now one hot topic among crankbaits is do you throw an ewg style bait like the uh, kvd triple grip or do you throw a traditional round bin like the owner i think my the one that i throw a lot is the stx 36 i believe i don't know i think pretty sure it's 36 but i don't know if it's the stx or something like that but it's the owner stinger hook anyways my theory on crankbait fishing is so let me tell you the basics of ewg or not if you hook a fish on ewg and get it past the bar the concept is it's harder for that fish to throw an ewg than it is to throw a traditional round bin so a traditional round bin hook like this right here, it's supposed to be easy for that fish to throw if you get it past the barb. I don't believe in that at all. I think if you get a hook past the barb, that fish is almost always coming to the boat. The problem with crankbaits is a lot of times you'll hook them outside of the mouth, you'll hook them inside the mouth, but you'll have two hooks in, and you'll just have them barely hooked past the first layer of skin, and that's called being skin hooked. Now, you'll be trying to keep that fish down, they come up on the first jump, and they throw the bait. So that is the problem with crankbait fishing that's why you use a parabolic rod is because when you got them hooked only under the first layer of skin if you're using a really fast action rod that has a lot of power it's easy for you to go ahead and rip that skin out whenever you're fighting the fish if you have a real soft rod you just kind of play them and just kind of wind them to the boat whenever they get ready to come this direction but anyways back to the hook point 
the triple grip EWG, whenever you hook them past the barb, the concept is you don't lose as many fish. The round bend, the concept is whenever a fish slaps at it, it's easier for the round bend to snag a fish. Like say, it just snagged on my thing because the hook point sticks out more. The, the uh, triple grips or the EWG style hooks, the hook points are kind of bent in more. So it's harder for that hook point to snag a fish whenever it swipes at your bait. Now what that means is whenever you do hook a fish on the triple grip, the fish is gonna be eight the bait down their throat and you're gonna hook them. Usually if a fish has an eight like that, it don't matter if you got round bends or what, it's going to come to the boat. So my theory is whatever hooks the most fish, it's probably gonna land the most fish. So I stick to a round bend. I just try to get the hook in past the barb and I have faith I'm gonna land them. I use really good hooks. I use the owner, st owner stingers and I just have confidence it's gonna come to the boat. I'm not sponsored by owner at all. I feel like they're the best treble hook on the market. So that's the ones I use. Basically, I forgot to tell you what rod was throwing on. Square bills, almost always, always throw it on a seven foot medium moderate. I have went up to a seven foot four for some of the 2.5 square bills, a little bit bigger square bills, a little bit heavier rod, and I'll throw a seven foot four medium heavy for a big 2.5 square bill. Most time for this square bill right here though, it's gonna be a seven foot medium moderate. Same exact rod is what I throw these style baits on. And the reason for that is that seven foot medium I'll throw a 10 pound line on that a ton. If I'm throwing one of these crankbaits, it's gonna be 12 to 14 pound line. Sometimes I'll even throw 15 or 16 if I'm cranking brush piles. This right here, it's gonna be 10 pound line, 10 pound line for all these. And I'll throw 12 to 14 for my lipless baits. So that medium moderate rod with 10 pound line, you wouldn't believe how far you can throw these Bandit 200s. And I use uh, Shimano Corrado 50 reels for cranking almost always. And that reel has a small spool and it holds a, enough line of 10 pound line. And that small spool, that super parabolic rod and that light line, I can throw these baits so far. I mean, I, I can make this square bill right here dive down to six and a half feet or, or seven feet. I've had it hung before where I had a seven foot rod all the way under the water and still can't get down to it. And this is a five foot diver, four or five foot diver. But I can throw it so far on that rod and reel it dives six or seven foot. That's a huge advantage whenever you're fishing against other people. I can just get that much deeper with a bait they don't usually see down there. So that's pretty much all I know about crankbaits, or at least all I can remember to tell y'all right now. If y'all like that video, leave a like, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button. Uh, it's winter time now and my boat's in the shop. So I'm gonna have to do a couple more of these tips and trick videos before I get to go fishing again for real. So let me know what y'all wanna hear about down below. I will see y'all next time. That's it for me. See y'all. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. Y'all voted on this, so I did it. That's it. Hunter's idea. Bitsy Manor. Bitsy Manor. That's mine. I'm getting me a Bitsy Manor boat wrap. When do you use this? Never. It's just really cute. I don't even know why we got that. It's cute. I go for the cute ones. He don't. I went for one cute one.